And so here we're going to go through an example of how to extract um, a time series of, of uh, pixel values um, using Google Earth Engine. Alright, so this example is on our website, so if you go to research and then in our data sets and tools page here, there's this GEE extract example. And if you run, if you, if you click on that, it'll download a file and, or a, a zip folder. Let's extract this out here. Um, and inside of here we have uh, some example data, some example output, and then the scripts that we use. Um, so uh, first I'm going to talk about kind of the, the, the tools we're using and then I'll walk through an example. Okay, so I'm going to close this. So we're making use of this uh, Python tool. So uh, this is by, uh, it's available here on this GitHub page and the tools name, or the, the package or library is GEE subset. Um, and effectively what this allows you to do is pull pixel values from an image collection on Google Earth Engine um, at point locations and then store that back into a shape or, S or a CSV file. Um, so before you use this, you're going to have to install it. So to install it, um, you can either install it with git here or um, you can um, install it with pip if you're like using conda. So this is what I did. Note that I had an, an issue when I installed it. There was like a, a spacing issue in the file. Um, so I had to go into the the GE subset Python f file in my Anaconda environment and fix the spacing to get it to work. Um, it may work fine if you use Git, I'm not sure, um, but I had issue with that. It was a pretty easy fix though. It tells you which line the error is on. Okay, so anyway, this is the tool. So thanks for the thanks to the so I guess Sean and Cohen here who provided it. It's a pretty nifty little tool. Okay, so um, first thing we're gonna do is start off in um, in Python. So um, I already have a Jupyter notebook opened here, and this is the Jupyter notebook that we provided on the make this a little bit bigger here that we provided in in the in the example. Okay, so first thing you're going to need to do is connect to Earth Engine, and you do that through the Google Earth Engine API library, um, which should get installed when you install GE sub, um, subset since it's a dependency. So that's called EE, so here we're importing EE. Now to actually use this, since you're interacting with Google Earth Engine, you have to have a Google Earth Engine account. So running this EE authentic Authenticate and, e and EE Initialize, basically sets that up. So once you run authenticate here, it'll it'll send you over to um, uh, it'll send you like a code and then you put that in and then you initialize and then you're able to use it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and run this and you'll see how that works. So you see here it popped up on a page. I'm going to run this over to another screen here so you don't see my um, password. Okay, so it will ask you to allow and then hit copy. All right, so anyway, I got a code over here on the other screen, and I'm just gonna drop that in with Control V, hit Enter, and it said it it, it uh, authenticated it. So sh I should be able to connect with Google Earth Engine now. Okay, and then there's a couple other libraries that you're gonna need to have access to. Um, so OS, RE, Pandas, there's GE subset, and from that we're importing the GE subset script, and then GeoPandas, which we'll use to read in the data. Okay, so if I run that, that should load in. If your um, your environment set up, you shouldn't have any issues, or correctly, shouldn't have any issues. Okay, then I'm going to read in my point data. Um, I'm going to show you what that looks like uh, quickly here. I'm just going to open up. We'll just use Arc here. All right, so here's the data. This is just an extent. You actually don't need that for the example. But I just created a bunch of points here. It's kind of in the Alps area into northern, down into northern Italy and up into um, Bavaria and like Tyrol, Austria, and a little bit into Switzerland there. So anyway, these don't represent anything. They're just a bunch of points. I just picked this area because there was a lot of like, you know, landscape and land cover variability in that small extent. All right, so that's the data. So when you read this in with um, GeoPandas, it effectively reads it in as a pandas data frame, but it maintains the spatial reference information in the table. And I'm just calling head on it here so we can see the first set of records. Okay, so you see it has an ID, 
a longitude, a latitude, an ID, another ID for the points, and then we have the geometry field here. Um, so again, if we go into the attribute table with here, you can see basically the same setup. So we have our FID, we have our longitude, latitude, and point ID. So um, I found this really, you're going to need to use the fields here um, in the function to do the subsetting. So you're going to want to create lat long fields. If you're not sure how to do that, the easiest way in ARC is to do um, calculate geometry. Yeah, calculate geometry attributes. And um, then if depending on the type of geometry, these are points, you should be able to calculate some stuff, right? So we could calculate the X coordinate and the Y coordinate and then you know name a field. I'm not gonna run this because you know, I already have those. And then you do want to set a coordinate system to reference them to. For doing that, for using this in Google Earth Engine, I do, I find the easiest thing to do is just use geographic coordinates in WGS84. So basically, the latitude and longitude. Web Mercator coordinates should also work. Um, so if I wanted to use um, WGS84, for example, I would just go to Projected Coordinate Systems, World, and then WGS84. Okay, and then that would add those columns. And then you get a point ID. I basically just copy the FID over into a field and add a 1 to a sort of, so a sort of 1 instead of 0. Just some simple um, attribute calculation, table calculation stuff. Okay, so anyway, that's how I got that data. Um, okay, so the next thing, I'm just I'm listing out the number of points I have, and then I'm creating an in, a set of indexes using the range and list functions here. Um, so basically we're going from 0 to the number of features by 1. So I'm just going to run that real quick. So as you can see, there are 78 features um, in the table, or 78 points. So I created this um, index from 0 to 77. And that's what we're going to use to iterate over. OK. All right, and then we're ready to run it. So this is actually pretty easy. Um, so what I'm doing here is a for loop. So we have for i in site set. And then we run the code here. And um, so this is the function, GE subset. You have to give it a product, and this is going to be the Google Earth Engine ID. What I'm using here is um, Tier 1 Surface Reflectance from Collection 1, Landsat 8. Um, and then you can list the subset of bands that you can see those kind of extend out there. Um, for this, you're going to want to include the QA bands because you're going to we'll use that later for, for filtering. Um, and if you're not sure what the bands are called, if you just search for this in Google, just dumping this in my Google search over here. Pull this over here. So um, there's the data, and it tells you what the band designations are. So I, you, I can, I'm listing those. Now, if you list something that doesn't exist, like band 12, for example, it's generally going to flag an error as opposed to skip it. OK, so that's, that's the name. And if you're not sure of the name, again, just search like Google Earth Engine and the data name. You can generally find the, the, the name there. And that's the image collection name. And then our list of bands we want to extract. Then our date range. So here I'm going from April 11, 2018 to, to January or December 31st, 2020. Then I have to give it the latitude and the longitude of the coordinate. Um, this is just pulling from the table. Note that you don't actually need the geometry since you're just using the attributes. So you could just feed it a CSV file or something. You wouldn't need to use a shape file. So I'm calling it index 2 because that's the third column is the latitude. So if we go back up here, third column. And remember, Python index starts indexing at 0. And then the second column, or index 1, is the longitude. And I'm using a scale of 30 since the like default cell size for Landsat is you know 30 by 30 meter pixel. OK, um, and then I'm pulling out the name of the site. Um, so uh, to do that, I'm using the index 3. Uh, which again is this, so that's column four, index three, and then I'm writing that into a new column in the result called site index, and then I write that out. So what this should do is it should loop through the data. It should generate a CSV file um, for uh, for each point, um, and then and then write that out again to your disk. 
And one thing that's nice about using this tool is it doesn't really matter what your what like what data you're trying to extract. Um, the setup is effectively the same. So here I'm basically just replicating the same process, but I'm doing that with uh, for Sentinel two surface reflectance. So I just change the product name, change the bands because it's a different set of bands. Start end dates are the same. The table was set up. Um, we're using the same points, so everything else is the same. Lat long coordinates are the same thing from the table ID, and then we're just writing that out. I did change the scale to 10 since that's the smallest cell size of the different bands in Sentinel. They vary from 10, 20, and 60. And that should do it. So let me just run, start running this so you can see um, how it works. Um, well, my machine, this doesn't take very long. Um, Part of it, I think, will depend on your internet connection and whatnot. But let me show you what this is doing as it's running. So I'm going to go in here to this GE examples, and then I have this tables folder, and then we're doing Landsat, and you can see as it goes there, it's writing out the CSV files. So as you get a total of 78 CSV files since we have 78 points. So one CSV file for each point. Okay, so I'm going to cut here, and then when we come back, we'll have our output, and then we'll move into R to do some data sub, uh, do some post processing on the data. All right, so I'm back now, and uh, that took about 15 to 20 minutes to run on my machine for both, so the Landsat and the Sentinel extractions. So it's pretty quick. Um, all right, so I'll show you what we ended up with. So again, I wrote everything out into this tables folder, and I had subfolders in here for the Landsat data and the Sentinel-2 data. So in each one, I ended up with 78 files representing each of the 78 sample locations. And then inside of the file, uh, we have um, a bunch of info. So we have the ID for the image the lat long fields uh, uh, of the point, the, the date, and then we have all the band information that we extracted, including some of the QA bands there. The product, which is just the, telling us that it's the tier one surface ratio, and then the site ID, and these are all one because this is the first site. And then for the other set, it was pretty similar, but the main difference will just be some of the bands, because it's a different sensor, so you can see we have a different set of bands here and different product, right? Okay, so now we're going to move into R and actually do some post-processing on uh, this data to end up with one table um, and getting rid of things like, you know, cloud-contaminated scenes and whatnot. Okay, so I'm going to shift into R. So this is another script that we provided. This is this R data cleaning script, and, um, th and it's actually pretty simple. So um, here's basically the workflow. So um, I set the working directory. So here we're going to start off working with the Landsat data. So um, I, uh, I'm i going into that folder. And then we're pulling in some libraries here, dplyr and per, tidyr, G ggplot2. So basically a lot of data manipulation and tidyverse packages. Okay, so once we pull those in, the next thing I'm going to do is read in all the CSV files in that folder using a list files. Um, here I'm setting the pattern equal to um, any, basically anything that ends in CSV, um, and I'm returning the full names. And I didn't have to set a folder here because it's just going to assume I mean the working directory. Okay, so here I end up with this object with 78 values in it. If I call that down here, so you basically it just lists out the CSV files in that folder. Okay, and then this next function, what it does is it uses um, this uh, do call and l apply here, um, which is for lists, um, to basically combine all of, to read in and then merge all of those CSV files into one file. So if I run that, I end up with this object. You can see it has 8,136 observations and 20 variables. Um, so that represents all the data points that were extracted uh, for each of the 78 records or point locations. Okay, and then I use this substring method to pull out um, a portion to pull out a, the portion of the date that I want, and this is coming from this date field. So if we go in here to this date field, you can see it gave us the 
year, month, day, and then like you know hour time. And we don't we really just need the date. Uh, we don't need the the hourly or anything. So th what this is doing is subsetting that out so we just get the first 10 characters, <clears throat> which is this the year, month, day. And then I'm defining that column as a date and this format. Okay, so now if we go back into this table and we go to our new date field, which is that here on the end, we can see that it's, um, it's defined there. So this is unknown, but I think it didn't update. Um, but anyway, we got a, a month, year, or month, or year, month, day format there. Okay, and then the next thing we want to do is uh, filter out any of the or any class of, or pixels that are flagged as potentially having snow or cloud cover or cloud shadow or whatnot. So we're using these IDs here. So these are all the IDs for what we're going to consider clean pixels. So I put a link in here, and if you want, you can see. Um, what different codes mean um, on this site um, and again I'm just pulling out the codes that I want um, which is this list here and then I use this filter and basically I only pull out data points where the pixel QA is one of these values in this uh, in this vector Okay, so that's subsetted to down to 3,359 points. So more than half of the data points were flagged as potentially contaminated. Um, and then here, this isn't actually required. This is just to look at one of the data points. So here I'm just pulling out all the site one data points, and I'm making a time series plot, and I'm calculating um, the uh, NDVI here um, just for... There we go. So you can kind of see the time series there, and then just writing the data out to uh, to disk as one file. Okay, so if I go into that folder here, uh, let's see where are we at. This is that output. So you can see here we basically have all of our data that is considered clean and then we could do something with it like time series analysis or something um, and that's all com all combined for all those sites into one file okay and then for doing the sentinel 2 day it's effectively the same process again we're just reading in our pa setting a working directory reading in our packages listing all the csv files merging them into one file um, formatting our date field um, the only real difference here is for the filter, we have a different set of codes, and here's again a link to what the different filters are. Um, so we basically just want the ones that have QA60 is zero. Those are considered clean. Again, here this isn't required, we're just plotting one. So there you can see that series. Okay, and then um, lastly we write that out to file. And then if we go into our file folder again, where we have that stored. Now you can see we have this data set of clean measurements at those different sites with all the different bands there. Okay, so anyway, this is just a quick example of using uh, uh, the GE subset um, library in Python in Google Earth Engine and the, to uh, extract out um, all the pixel values at a point location over for specific data set over a certain time period and then using R to post process that data and clean and clean it up.